All right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. Today, I will show you how to sort of manually attach the MIA Exposure Photographic Tone Map um, or the MIA Exposure Photographic Node in Mental Ray. And this is really cool because it's much better than the, the simple method which gets um, attached by default, okay? So let's take a look at the hypershade right here for a second. And essentially what this script does is it replaces the MIA exposure simple node, which is sort of by default is connected to your physical sun and sky system. And instead it replaces it with the much nicer MIA exposure photographic node. Okay, so essentially when we use physical sun and sky, it's best or it's, <laughs> it's good to get rid of this exposure simple because it's just what it means. It's a simple exposure control and not nearly as cool as the MIA exposure photographic. But if you don't know a couple of things about hooking this up manually, um, it won't ever work for you. <laughs> okay, so we're going to explore the mystery of, of this little deal right here. And David wrote a, a script to automate this, and it's available for 2009, 2010, and 2011. Thank you, David. I've used it, have it installed. It's great because this uh, script sort of automates the process of what I'm going to show you how to do manually here. Okay, so let's get started. And before you do that, make sure you go over and check out Lester Banks for good stuff for your brain. Go to Maya Tutorials, maybe go shopping in his store. Cool stuff. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Um, set up a scene with just a plane, some spheres, and some various colors attached. Okay, no big deal there. Simple stuff. Uh, create a sphere right here, and you might want to create a, oh, you know, create a material, maybe do a, an MIA material, and choose your MIA material there, and maybe give it a preset of, say, like chrome, okay? So now you have a chrome shader, so MIA material 2, I'm going to go ahead and assign this, that existing material, MIA material 2, and I now have a chrome ball. If I were to do a render, it is going to look pretty boring, <laughs> okay? But at least we can see what the default light is doing here. And now we're going to invoke the magical powers of the physical sun and sky. So if you go to your render settings, go to physical sun and sky and hit create. And in this case, because I have the um, script installed from David, it goes to the gives me an option in a little window right here whether I want to choose that. For right now, I'm going to go with simple because that'll be your default setting as well. Okay, so now that I have that simple setting selected, let's sort of move everything out of the way here. Let's do another quick render. I'm going to go ahead and save that one and do a render. Okay, and that's pretty much what you would expect to get, you know, with this physical sun and sky. It looks real bright and blown out and kind of ugly to begin with because it really needs to be adjusted and refined. But let's take a look at what happened there. I'm going to clear my graph here. And if you go to, you, you'll probably be in your material section, but if you go to utilities, you will now see these little utilities from the physical sun and sky. I have the exposure simple node right here. This one's the sky node. And this one right here is the sun node. Okay. And really, with the sun node, the only thing you have to worry about over here is shadow softness and samples, okay? That'll help you get some softer shadows and actually make them look a lot better by up in the samples. So really, that's all you're going to have to deal with there. Um, as far as the physical sky goes, there's quite a few controls here that we're going to have even after we hook up the uh, photographic node. So these never really change. So just leave those at default for the moment. And I want to look at this exposure simple node. And let's really see how limited this is, okay? Here's my, my render, and I think, I'll, I think I'll do a little bit more of an angle like that. And you'll notice the sun is, is coming straight down. What I like to do is sort of move this up. So I'll just go ahead and bring this up a little ways. And I think I might scale it um, by just bringing the scale of that that object up. That way I can see it. It's not going to affect the lighting, but I can just see it a lot better. Okay, 
So now I'll just rotate it, and maybe angle it over a little bit, just so it casts, you know, a shadow that might flow across there. All right. And while I'm here, I want to look at the shadows itself on this sun shape. I'm going to go ahead and use depth map shadows at like maybe, you know, a 1024 resolution with a filter size of about four, something like that. That'll give me a nice depth map shadow and it won't give me too much more on my render time. So I'll go ahead and do another quick render. All right, so I'm seeing the shadows. Everything looks pretty good, but it's still this exposure that we're worried about. So let's take a look at that, that exposure. You can choose between your nodes over here. So I can just go over to this MIA exposure simple and choose that and it should give me my parameters here. And let's look at the gain. Um, right now the pedestal's at zero, which yeah, we can leave it there, but let's take this gain down from like say 0.2 to 0.1. And I'll do another quick render. All right, so there's a little bit less. Um, it, here's our render previous right there, and here it is at 0.2. So that knocked it down a little bit, but really it didn't do much for the overall color or anything. And, and these just sort of look bland and lifeless, and I don't know, the sky is just kind of a blue. All right, well, you could play around with these controls all day long to try and get a good exposure over here. But let's just say that I live with this for a moment. You can come over into your, your uh, physical uh, sky and maybe give it a little bit of a shift. Um, you know, in this case, I, I might want to try 0.100, whatever. Just give it a little shift toward the red. We'll do another quick render. And that kind of warms it up a little bit, but it doesn't really do much um, overall. So maybe we'll, maybe we could put the saturation up a little bit. I'll, I'll do a 1.5 there and do another render. And essentially what I'm trying to show you here is how limited your controls are, um, especially in terms of, you know, color and, and, and exposure and, and saturation and whatnot. So anyway, it's best to just sort of get away from this exposure simple node. And I think what I'll do is I will set these back. I'm going to set the red blue shift back to, to zero over here. And I'm going to put the saturation down to, to one. And I'll do a quick render. And we'll get rid of this node. OK, so there it is, pretty boring. I'll go ahead and save that one. Now, when I invoke the physical sun and sky system, essentially it, it attached it to the perspective camera. Okay, so if I come over into my camera, choose your camera, and look at all the parameters here, under the mental ray section, you'll scroll down a bit and come down to your mental ray section, and you'll see where the environment shader is the physical sky, and the lens shader is that exposure simple. Well, let's just sort of hover over this lens shader and, and right mouse click and come down and break that connection. Okay, so now we don't have a, a lens shader at all which is great. We don't want that. We want to come down into the lens section in mental ray and we want to create an exposure photographic node right there. Okay. And select your camera again. I'm going to go ahead and select the perspective cam and I'm going to take this newly created exposure photographic node. I'm just going to hover over it while my camera is open over here. I'm going to hover middle mouse button, drag and drop it on top of that lens shader. Okay, and there it is. So we're almost, we're almost there. Let's do a quick render. Here we go. And that's what you should see. It's all black. <laughs> okay, this will frustrate you uh, forever until you know this next step because um, essentially the exposure photographic node is, has a CM factor of one. Okay. But in order to work with this um, physical sun and sky system, if you go ahead and choose your physical sky right there, and if you don't have it up, just come over and choose it from over here. Okay, physical sky. And what we're concerned with here is the conversion of the RGB conversion. 
Um, technically, this should be at 0 0.318 for all of these values. Okay, and I didn't just make this number up at the top of my head. <laughs> uh, I'm going to switch them to 0 0.318. This comes from the Mental Ray Manual, and I'm going to do another render. Okay, we're back in business. Um, because we, we really needed to reset a value, and this value, the 0 0.318, is the correct number to use when you're using that uh, exposure photographic node. Um, it basically just resets things and balances them out. But that exposure simple node uses a 0 0.000100 value. Okay? It's weird, I know, but that's the way it is. Okay? <laughs> so now we can sort of get busy with this photographic node. If I come over here and, and choose that, you'll see that you have controls that are basically just like you would have on a camera. You know, you can set a, a film speed from, you know, a slow speed film to a high speed film if you want. That'll vary your exposure. I would leave this CM factor two at two, uh, CM two factor at one, excuse me. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Just sort of stay with the default value there. And the F number, this works just like it would on a camera. Um, you have, you know, F11, F16, you know, F22, F, you know, what, 32, you know, you have your, your F stop numbers which control your exposures. And if you don't know about F numbers, go and research the history of photography and learn your F stops, all right? <laughs> so these are just about controlling exposure. Next, you have vin vignetting. You can burn some highlights, crush the blacks. So what I like to do with a scene like this right off is I'll, I'll just take the saturation and sort of bring that up to the middle. I'll take my blacks and I'll crush those out a little bit. I'll burn my highlights in, so I might just bring that up a little bit to start. And in terms of saturation, yeah, we're about right there. And I'm going to show you something here. We're going to do a quick render. Okay. And now the magic happens. <laughs> All right, let's look at how this changed. I'm going to save that render. There's our one from prior, right? Right there's our prior render, and there's our new one. So prior, and there's our new. Okay. So really, you know, we're we're in a whole new world once we hook up that um, exposure photographic node, and we can minutely, you know, control it from over here. Now. Some people work in a 2.2 gamma on this. Depending on your pipeline or whatever, you may not want to switch this up, but I like to drop it down to 1.8 if I'm just doing a you know special project render or something like that. So I'll drop that down a little bit, and what that does is it sort of gives me a little bit smoother kind of look, uh, and I can you know adjust it from there. So I'm going to keep that image, and we'll do a and there it was at uh, gamma of 2.2 and there's our 1.8 okay so it just sort of takes a little bit of that haze out and then I can still do minute controls with the exposure over here and you know you can always add a half stop in if I want this to be you know this is a gray Lambert essentially but if the Sun were hitting on there it might be a little brighter so I'm going to use this sort of as a grayscale comparison and say maybe take that from you know, F16 to 11.5, so that's about a half stop less. And I'll go ahead and do a quick render. And there it is. Okay, so now we get a little bit brighter. There was our little darker. Here's our half stop brighter. So you can see quite a bit of latitude there. And you, so you can, you know, do these in, in increments of, you know, 0 0.250, 0 0.50, whatever. But you really have a lot of control over anything you're trying to do there. Now, let's take a look at what happens when you create a new camera. Um, I'll go ahead and leave this up here, and we'll go ahead and create camera. We'll just create a camera. Right away, if you look in your, your outliner and select that camera that you just created, you'll notice that it doesn't have the environment shader hooked up or the lens shader, okay? So rather than hitting update <clears throat> update camera connections, which we may be able to do, um, uh, I haven't messed around with that, but for, for the moment, let's just, let's, let's well, let's, let's see what happens here. I'm gonna, now, no, tell you what, 
it's best just to show you how to do this manually. Once again, all you have to do is come over, grab your exposure uh, photographic node, just sort of hover over that right there, middle mouse button drag and put that on your lens shader, and then middle mouse button kind of hover over the physical sky and drop that on top of the environment shader. And then switch up your rendering while you're at it here uh, to render and we'll render that new camera. So we'll render camera one and it's going to look really weird because I didn't position it. So <laughs> there it is. Let's position that camera. While I have that camera chosen, I'm going to go to panels and click look through selected. And I'll just sort of back off that camera a little bit and take the we'll kind of take the same angle. All right, one final render. I don't need to save that one. Okay, and there it is. It'll look exactly like your other cameras, and any changes you make to the physical sky will translate to every camera after you do this. And it'll also, any changes to this exposure photographic, and it'll, it'll change with your camera. So, great. I hope that clarifies some stuff, and hopefully you'll get a much better look from your physical sun and sky system. So, as always, thanks for watching, and um, be a good person. Uh, read a book. It's good for your brain, and, you know, we'll see you for the next one, okay? Thanks for watching.